Okay, in this little modeling exercise, um, I'm going to go ahead and build um, some elements that could go into a very simple castle. Um, I'm going to be using uh, all of the modeling tools that we've covered in class, and that's the purpose of this exercise, is to take um, the tools that we've covered, which are extrude, they are the knife tool, and they are um, the loop cut tool. We might use the boolean modifier as well to cut uh, through objects, and we might use the solidify modifier as well. So kind of putting them all together into something uh, logical. Okay, so um, normally what I would do is I would go ahead and I would research uh, castle designs. I could go ahead and type in something like um, castle design or castle concept. Um, you could, of course, get into um, different styles. Um, you could look around at uh, schematics or uh, blueprints here. Um, I'm just going to be modeling a quick little exterior, um, and I'm just looking for inspiration right now. So um, you guys can go ahead and search. Um, this castle can really be made up of your own, your own design, uh, but I want to show you how to maybe model uh, certain elements of it. Um, that's kind of a cool one there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do um, a turret here, um, or one of these uh, towers here. Um, and I'm going to do one of these uh, cylindrical uh, ones that you see that are quite popular. OK, so um, you can sort of see it here. It doesn't need to be animated, but I kind of like that. Um, OK, so back over to Blender. So I'm going to delete the cube, and I'm going to add in a um, so I could start off with either a circle or with a cylinder, and I'm going to start off with a cylinder. And I think I'm going to divide my window into two. And I'm going to go ahead and make this one be in front view and no perspective. Okay, so I press numpad 1 and numpad 5, so now I can actually see it. And over here, I'll keep a perspective view going here so you can just see both happening at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to tab into edit mode, um, and I think in my front view here, um, I'm going to flip over into wireframe mode. That way you can actually see all the cuts and everything like that going through it. So I'm going to uh, come down here and click on this little button here and change from solid to wireframe mode. Okay, um, so I'm going to make the base now, and I can do this a number of ways. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it with the loop cut, just so you guys can see how this works. So I'm going to do Control R, and I'm going to do a horizontal cut, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring it down right about here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and then scale it inward, so that way I get about a 45 degree angle. Um, I'm going to do another loop cut, so Control R, and bring it close to the first one. And now I'm going to have that one scale in as well. Something like that. And this one I'm going to actually bring down a little bit so it's flat. It lines up with the first one. And you can see what that does is it creates this, this nice um, kind of base here. Um, OK. And just to make this a little bit cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and box select all of these vertices here and maybe I'll go ahead and bring them down a little bit, maybe scale out a little bit so it's not quite so extreme. Okay, so it looks a little bit like a uh, pot for a plant, but I'll fix that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and box select and I'm going to select all those vertices up top. I'm going to go ahead and scale them in as well so it's more like a tower and less like a uh, pot planter. Uh, I'll go ahead and do grab z-axis, bring it up until I'm pretty happy. Okay, so let's assume that I'm pretty happy with that there. Now I want to go ahead and start modeling the top of it. So what I'm going to do is I want it to go back out again. Um, so I need new geometry, and I'm going to use extrude for that, uh, but it's going to be a little trick. So I'm going to press E to extrude, but I'm not going to move the extrusion. Um, I'm just going to left click and place it. So the new extrusion did happen. You just have to trust that it happened, even though you can't see it. 
So now I want to actually be able to see it, so I'm going to scale it outwards. So I'm going to press S, scale outwards, and you'll see that now it um, gives me this, this, this sort of this edge, this lip that's going around. Okay, um, so now I could move it straight up, and it will give me this kind of 45 degree angle. Um, I'm going to undo that move. Um, I don't want it to be a 45 degree angle, I want it to go straight up. That's just the, the, the look I'm going for. So I'm going to do another extrusion on the z-axis, and because I do another extrusion, um, I'm, a, I'm able to get these nice straight edges. So this could be everything from a candlestick to what I'm going for, which is a uh, castle uh, tower here. So I've got the basic look that I want for the cap, uh, but now I want to do what are called crenellations, and the crenellations are those little um, squares, those little cubes up at the top that maybe the archers would um, hide behind so that they could then appear and shoot downward, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, I'm going to do another extrude and scale. So I'm going to do E to extrude, left click to place the extrude, then S to scale inward, and I'll just eyeball it here. Okay, there we go. So now that I've done that, you can probably see where I'm going here. Uh, I'm going to press Control Tab, get over to face mode, and I'm going to go ahead and select every other one here. Um, and it just works out that these can now be the crenellations. Okay, so there we are, and I'm going to extrude those up. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if I wanted to get a little bit fancier, what I could maybe do is I could maybe take this center um, uh, disk in here, and I could do uh, E for extrude, left click to place it, uh, maybe scale it inward a little bit. Then maybe I could extrude and go downward a little bit. Maybe scale it in a little bit. Um, just give it a little bit more modeling. Uh, just makes it more interesting. Again, if, if the viewer's ever going to see this or if the camera's ever going to see it in animation, um, it would look pretty cool. Okay. Um, so now what I want to do is I've got my basic tower and I'm pretty happy with it overall. Um, but now I want to go ahead and I want to cut a, um, an actual window uh, through it so I can actually uh, see this here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is right now if I were to cut a hole through this uh, cylinder here, this cylinder here is paper thin. You can see over here on the left hand view um, that it's not, um, there's no thickness to the walls yet. Um, and so if I were to cut through here, um, it wouldn't have any thickness to it yet. Um, so I can handle that a couple of different ways. Uh, the way that I'm going to handle it is I'm going to actually take this top disc that I did here, and I'm going to uh, do one more extrusion, and I'm going to go straight down, and you can see that it's actually hollowing out um, this cylinder here. And I'm going to go all the way, mostly down to the base. Okay, so now I have actual wall thickness um, to this middle body area here. Okay, I'm going to hop out of edit mode and I'm going to go ahead and make my uh, window cutting shape. So the design I'm going for is going to be, um, I don't know if it's in over here, it's really hard to see. Those are square windows for the most part. Um, what I want is I want a um, flat on the bottom and I want kind of an arched uh, top. So I'm sure there's a special title for that but um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just do that. So the hardest part of that is the arch. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow and I'm gonna do shift A and I'm going to add in a, um, a circle. Circle comes in way too big uh, so first of all I'm going to uh, get into edit mode on the circle uh, let me get back to vertex mode so you can see those vertices. I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis 90 degrees so you can actually see the circle. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it down to what I think is going to be appropriate. Okay, so I think that's pretty good size. Um, I'm just going to compare it. If I were to cut, if I were looking at this top arch here, I'll probably go a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead now. 
and looking at the circle, um, I said that I was going to borrow. Um, and what I don't need is I don't need these bottom vertices here. So I'm going to take box select, and I'm going to box select these bottom vertices here, and X to delete them. I'm then going to take, uh, which then gives me this nice arch here, which I could try to hand um, make and extrude, but I'd never get it to be this perfect arc. Um, so I'm going to take these two vertices here, and select them and I'm going to press E and make sure that I'm doing this along the z-axis and I'm going to extrude them and I'm going to extrude them down until I get that nice archway that I'm looking for here. Um, okay so last but not least um, to make this into a 3D object I need to go ahead and actually make this into a face so I'm going to go ahead and select all of my vertices press F to make a face and there you go I've got a um, archway so this could be a doorway um, that I could maybe try to cut through the uh, entire thing um, and it can also be a uh, window so I'm gonna try both just to sort of challenge myself here um, okay so this needs to have some thickness now so I'm gonna use the extrude tool and I'm gonna go ahead and extrude um, here we go something like that and it looks a little bit like a uh, mailbox now okay all right, so I'm going to tab out of edit mode, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this object. I think what I'm going to do is, since I'm going to maybe use this a couple different times, I'm going to do Shift D and duplicate, and that way um, I can place my cutting object here, um, and you can see it's actually in the center of my uh, center of my uh, castle there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it back. Okay, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just flip over to top view just to see how centered it is. Okay, so that's looking better. Okay, so I just need it going through the castle wall. Um, you could try just doing a Boolean cut and, and seeing if it works. Um, if it doesn't, you might have to um, make this cutting object a little bit thicker, but we'll go ahead and try it. Okay, so this cutting object right now is called Circle 01. So I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to select my object that's going to be cut. In this case, it's the tower. Go to the modifier panel, Boolean. I'm going to change it to a difference operation, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Circle 01. Okay, so you can see that it just does not like it, which is not what I wanted obviously and it's perfect for a live demo so um, I'm gonna go ahead and try a couple things uh, I don't want to waste your time here with uh, trial and error um, but I'm gonna try a couple um, things that could uh, help and then I'll go ahead and be back when I'm when I've got it for you okay so I'm back um, the answer was a lot simpler than I thought um, I must be a little tired at the time of this recording but um, what I did was um, I did a couple of uh, things here and in the end uh, the simplest solution uh, was of course the right one. Um, so I've got the castle wall, I've got the object that's cutting it um, and I just I forgot to hide the cylinder so what I did was I did a difference because that's what I was thinking and that's what I was going for and um, and I hid the cutting object and this is what I ended up with um, which clearly I don't want um, so if your boolean operation doesn't appear this way you want like me here uh, first first things first try a different operation um, I tried difference because that's what I thought and that's what it should be um, in my honest opinion um, because it's cutting out but then I went to union um, and that's definitely not what I want and then I went to intersect um, and if I hide the cutting object you'll see that's exactly what I want um, it, it, it doesn't seem to me like that should be it, but um, that is it. Um, and that's exactly that's exactly what I was going for. So there we are. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do um, a couple more of those uh, just so you can see what it looks like. And again, hopefully it'll work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and collapse this Boolean modifier so that way it doesn't take up much space. I'm going to go ahead and take this other... Um, shape over here. Remember I had this one off to the side. I'm going to do Shift D and duplicate that again. And this time I think I'll go ahead and I'll maybe rotate it 90 degrees. 
place it on the other side. And this time maybe I'll go a little lower just to vary things up a little bit. Okay, so I now need to know what this object is called, and it's called circle two. So I'm going to take this here, castle, boolean, circle two, and we'll see if it takes the intersect, and of course, hide the cutting object, and ta-da, look at that. So, okay, so I've got two cutting um, objects there, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try my luck and I'm going to go ahead and do one more. Shift D. And this time I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to press my luck here and I'm going to go ahead and try an actual uh, doorway or gateway here. And there it is. Okay, so for this particular uh, doorway gateway here, um, I'm going to need to get into edit mode. Um, and make the cutting object uh, longer or um, deeper so it can actually cut. Okay, so we'll see what this looks like. Um, this could be a horrible mess. Um, we'll see. So um, so that is called circle three. Collapse that. Add in another Boolean modifier. I could actually go ahead and copy this Boolean modifier. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the Boolean modifier, but this time, oops. Um, so I actually added in an extra modifier. Um, if you ever need to delete a modifier, it's just a simple little X over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so I have that, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Circle 3. And it looks like it did it, so I'm pretty happy. And I'm going to hide the cutting object, and you can see, there we go. Um, it did a pretty good job of it. Um, okay, so you can see that... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide this original circle here. Okay, so you can see I've got some holes cut through the castle wall. Uh, you can see that I've got the uh, entryway cut through here. Um, you can see that it's actually showing the base here. What I could do is I could tab into edit mode and I could maybe go in and delete some of these extra faces I didn't want. Um, if I tap into edit mode right now, you'll see that all the cuts go away. And that's because they have not been applied. So they're not real yet. So when you tap into edit mode, edit mode is showing you what's real. So again, assuming I was happy with this, I would go ahead and hit apply, apply, apply. Um, and then when I tap into edit mode, now I can actually see things. And I can go ahead and I can uh, delete things. And I can maybe patch up gaps and holes that are left by selecting vertices and press F to make a face. And, and there you go. So um, that's it. So that's the um, castle tower with crenellations and um, some window uh, cuts through it and a, a sample little doorway cut at the base. Um, so that's going to be that. So it uses all of the tools that we've basically learned. It uses Boolean. It uses Extrude. It uses Loop Cut. Um, the only thing it didn't use was it didn't use uh, the knife tool. Now if I want to go ahead and uh, try the knife tool in here, I can go ahead and do that. Maybe I want to tear a chunk out of the uh, uh, the tower, just to show this to you here. And let me. There we go. There we go. Okay, so maybe I want to go ahead and tear a chunk out of this uh, tower wall here. Maybe it got hit by a catapult or something. So to finish this tutorial here, um, again I'm going to tab into edit mode. Make sure I have nothing selected. And I think I'm going to go ahead and I'll do this over here. So I'm going to press K for the knife tool. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to try my luck at drawing kind of a big chunk here. Um, you can orbit your view while you're in the knife mode, which is pretty cool. So that's all I'm doing here just to get precise cuts and I'll close it up and hit return okay so this is the big test did it actually cut properly and it looks like it did um, so now I could do control tab get into face mode and um, hopefully I could go ahead and select these faces okay so it looks pretty good um, so now what I could do is I could go ahead and I could maybe 
Um, I could press X and say delete faces and see what I get. And you can see that what it's showing is it's showing the inside. Um, it's showing the inside of where these cuts went. So if I actually wanted to go ahead and puncture a hole right through here, um, I probably wouldn't do the knife tool. Um, what I would do is I would go ahead and I would make this shape. I would start off with a plane. I would then merge the four uh, vertices together into one, and then I would use the extrude tool to extrude, 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 going all the way around to make this custom organic shape. Then I would extrude, I would make it into a face, so it's a nice flat representation of this shape. I would then extrude it uh, so it had some depth to it, and then I would just do a Boolean cut. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try taking this cut here that I did with the knife tool and I'm going to try in a top view, I'm going to go ahead and try extruding it inward and try extruding it inward to the inner part here and you can see that what it's done is it's created this little um, this little lip, this little ridge right here and maybe I'll try scaling that down a little bit just so it's got some depth to it. Okay, there we go. So, all right, that's not too bad. Um, I kind of like that. Uh, so all I did was I used the knife tool. I um, made a custom shape. I extruded inward so I could get more geometry, so I could get this little lip, this little ridge going around here. Um, and then I um, scaled it in a little bit to give it a little edge. Uh, it looks like a chunk was kind of taken out of the castle wall. So that's kind of a cool way that you can actually model in some um, damage. Um, okay, so um, your directions will be on the board. Um, I'm going to let you design your own castle. Um, I would like you to go ahead and research um, some castle designs, just get some inspiration. Uh, but you can just go off of your imagination and see what you can do. Um, this is obviously just the tower, but from here on you should be able to go ahead and model some walls. You should be able to model an archway for an um, opening or a, a gatehouse or a... Uh, uh, if you want to go ahead and try a drawbridge door, you can go ahead and do that. Um, if you want to get really ambitious, you can try to do, um, you know, some, some square towers, main house, um, moats, things of that nature. So, um, you know, let Game of Thrones inspire you and uh, see what you can do. Uh, we'll have a few classes for this, looking for the due date on the board, and uh, see what kind of cool little castle you can come up with. Good luck!